So what does bipolar disorder have to do with different levels of consciousness? Well, it turns out a lot. And to illustrate my point, the first thing I'm going to do is talk to you about the different people we worked with who had bipolar disorder this year. So the first person I'll talk about is my younger niece, who I will call here Anna. It's really her story that got me involved in this subject in the first place. Now, for those of you who don't know me, 12 years ago I was sent to a psychiatric hospital with an experience that other people saw as insanity, but I was sure it was very beneficial to me. I eventually discovered that what I had had was not a mental illness at all, but what was called a spiritual emergency. Dr. Stan Groff, Dr. David Lukoff, and others recommend that spiritual emergencies not be medicated or hospitalized because allowing them to process can be very beneficial to the person in crisis. Now, before my wife and I met Anna, she had already been in her experience for three days and was already being heavily medicated by psychiatry. So my big question at the time was, was Anna mentally ill or was she having an experience like my own, something like a spiritual emergency? To start, our experiences had a lot more similarities than there were differences. We both went through periods of high energy levels, had a strong desire to take off our clothes. Our sense of taste, smell, vision, all of that heightened. We had strong feelings of euphoria during the experience, and we both became extremely emotional. As far as differences go, the biggest difference was in our background. I had had my crisis at the age of 30, and I had been university educated and well-traveled by then. And she had her crisis when she was only 17 years old, and just leaving high school, going on to university. If there was one big difference, it was how we approached the experience. I saw mine as a deeply sacred thing, and I knew it was a special thing to go through. And while she had some spiritual aspects, on the whole, she was experiencing a lot of fear. She was afraid to go upstairs in her own house without her mother with her. That's how disturbed she was by the experience. And while I did take strong action to understand what happened to me, I avoided seeing psychologists or psychiatrists because I didn't think they understood what happened to me, and I didn't take any medication after my three-day hospitalization. Anna, on the other hand, was quite quick to comply with what her parents and psychiatrist wanted her to do. Uh, she's been seeing a psychiatrist and psychologist and has been medicated indefinitely. Convinced that Anna was not mentally ill, I went to work studying the difference between a spiritual emergency, which is what I had had and been so beneficial, and this bipolar disorder, this thing called bipolar disorder that she was being labeled with. And thanks to the YouTube community, I discovered that many people who have been labeled with bipolar disorder had experiences in acute psychosis that were identical to my own spiritual emergency. Along with the symptoms Anna showed, there can be experiences of oneness and timelessness, a sense of all-knowing the universe, and even a sacredness to the experience. You can experience delusions and hallucinations, usually of a spiritual nature. You will also think that you're dreaming or in some sort of a play or a dream world, and in this dream world you will want to test reality, which could lead you to want to walk through walls or even smash your car. Other symptoms can include the sense that you're being tested by God, that you're the Messiah, the prophet, or a saint. More and more, it looked like spiritual emergencies and bipolar disorder were the same thing. And then, just as I was figuring all this stuff out, Anna's older sister, Eliana, had an experience of her own. And once again, the initial symptoms were identical to Anna's and my own. And Eliana strongly conveyed the experiences of the spiritual emergency as well. The oneness, timelessness, uh, delusions, testing reality. Now, knowing what had happened to her sister, once her crisis got deeper, she called us immediately, and we supported her for five days, completely unmedicated and without hospitalization. Now, to my surprise, Eliana had much deeper experiences than I did. She had very deep out-of-body experiences, which had her feeling no pain for three days, even though she was bumping into things. And she felt that she was in her mother's womb and actually started to re-experience the birth happening all over again. In general, even though most of her experience with us was quite pleasant, once she came back, she was quite disturbed and frightened by the whole thing. While the bulk of her psychosis happened in the first manic episode, she would go on to have two more, and it was only after the third psychosis, which happened about two months later, that she was able to feel that she had a genuine rebirth and was finally able to get back to normal life. So the whole thing took about two months. Based on this limited experience, one thing became very clear, which is that Ileana never would have made it through her process without our aggressive interventions. And yet, for some reason, I had been able to get through this experience totally unsupported. How? My first clue came when I started talking to Anna, and I realized that she didn't recognize any sacredness to the experience that she had been going through, like I had 12 years earlier. And in talking to her about God, it became very clear that her God was quite a concrete, 
Jesus figure. Jesus was God for her, and this is the person she prayed to for guidance. So like all people at the traditional level of consciousness, her approach to the divine was clearly a religious one. And in the religious mindset, God is clearly above you and separate from you, and for people to have an experience of God is a very rare thing that only tends to happen to prophets, saints, these sort of people. So for anyone of the traditional religious mindset, the first thought is that an actual experience of God is in fact impossible. It's a lot more likely that what's happening to you is the work of the devil. Now in contrast to Anna, I had moved into the postmodern level of consciousness at about the age of 28. At that point in time, I awakened to the fact that while God could be outside of you, God could also be within you. And as a result, when I went into my psychosis two years later, the sacredness of it was unmistakable. So whereas I was able to trust this process and go with it, Anna was very unsure of what was happening and trusted the authority figures who told her to stop it immediately. And in her case, these authority figures were at the modern level. That's where our medical model is today. And similar to the traditional level, any psychosis, spiritual or otherwise, should be blocked immediately. Not because it's the work of the devil, but because it's a malfunction of your biological machinery. And it was at this modern level that Eliana had been exploring reality. Much like a social scientist, she had been traveling France recently and found the culture there fascinating and found herself a little bit confused as to what was the truth, which was the proper way to live, the right way to live, the French way or the Brazilian way, which way was right. And unlike traditional people that always carry a cultural bias, Eliana was looking at things in a very objective, factual way. And with this rational approach to life, she really showed her modern level of consciousness. Now, while all this was happening, I was getting a lot of email coming in through YouTube, and by now I've probably talked to over 200 people who have had some sort of psychosis. And one thing was very surprising. Some people were making it through as I had unsupported. They were healing. And what was really interesting was that all of these people that were healing were fitting into the postmodern level of consciousness. Just like the postmodern profile, these people had a deeper interest in spirituality than normal, and when their experiences came, they often did come related to some sort of spiritual practice or insight that came related to their relationship with God. Uh, they were almost always university educated, and generally over the age of 25, almost all of them were over the age of 25. And how did they do it? Well, they recognized it for the sacred experience that it was, and they surrendered to the process. Now, I want to remind you that this was a small group of people among the postmodern types that had this rebirth as I did and came through unmedicated. Everyone else was having their process blocked, either by the psychiatry and psychology of the modern level, by the religion of the traditional level, or even by their own fears. So, how do levels of consciousness affect bipolar disorder? Well, for one, it's only at the postmodern level of consciousness that we start to open up to the possibility of a positive, spiritual, manic experience. And as a result of this open attitude, some postmoderns are able to heal their disorder without support, simply by surrendering to the experience with faith. In contrast, people at the modern and traditional levels cannot heal without support because their level of consciousness is not prepared for this spiritual experience. And neither are the institutions of mainstream psychiatry, mainstream psychology, and organized religions, all of which harm what should be a sacred healing process. However, healing is possible for people at other levels, with loving support and a level 7 power of now approach to this psychosis. And that's what I'm going to talk about next.